the sweet sound of a silent Game Boy Advance. As you can hear, there's absolutely no hiss, hum or anything. And that's because I have a D-Hits kit stalled. There's also one for the Game Boy Advance SP and in this video, we're gonna go over both. Here is the Flex PCB that is called the D-Hum Game Boy Advance SP. As you can guess, it's for the Game Boy Advance SP. And then there is another one for the Game Boy Advance. Both of these are made by Retro 6 themselves. But there is other versions of this from other manufacturers, such as the one from Helder Tech that is called the Game Game Boy Advance Power Cleaner, so I'm going to actually compare all of these because they should be the same, but who knows, let's find out. So let's start with the Game Boy Advance installation, because this one definitely looks different compared to the Helder Tech version. So flipping over the Game Boy Advance, removing the battery cover, and then removing all of the screws from the back of the shell. With all those screws removed, you can remove the rear half of the shell and luckily this is as far as we need to go because we only need to concentrate our efforts on this area on the right to install the HISS kit. Some of the points we'll be connecting to are the following capacitors, some of these can be quite tricky but the most painful one is probably the battery terminal because it takes up so much heat. To install, simply place your flex PCB over the area, making sure to line up to all the previously pointed out points, and then you want to tack it in with a soldering iron. When tacking in, something to notice the joints won't be perfect, but it's just to hold the actual thing in place. Now that the flex PCB is held into place from the tack joints, I can go back, add some flux and touch up all the joints to actually make a solid connection, knowing that the board itself won't move out of place. If you are enjoying this video so far, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications. One thing to be careful of is this capacitor here is a lot smaller than the rest. You want to make sure you are actually making connection to it. And the only other tricky thing, as I mentioned before, is the battery terminal point requires so much heat. You just have to be very patient with it. One complaint with this kit is for some reason it seems to sit over a top of the capacitor and it flexes the whole thing, making it a bit more difficult to install. But that is basically it, fully installed. So what we can do now is put the rear half of the shell back on and then reinsert all of the screws and get to testing itself. The first audio sample I'm going to do is playing Spyro music before any installation has taken place. Then I'm going to follow it up with just turning on the Game Boy and not playing any music at all and just checking for the background noise. So that's what it was like before any installation. So let's compare or after this Retro 6 version has been installed, starting with the Spyro music, followed up by nothing. As you can see, or should I say here, there was a slight difference when there is nothing playing, there is a lot of background hum and hiss removed, but I personally didn't notice anything when the Spyro music was playing. However, here is the audio sample for if you installed the Helder mod version, which I have done previously if you want to see the video on that. In the top right corner now will be the iCard for that. So there seems to be little difference between the Retro 6 and the Helder mod version, so just purchase whatever one is convenient for you in your location at the right price. With the Game Boy Advance version done, let's move over to the Game Boy Advance SP, and you might be thinking, well, wow, that's quite a nice SP, but I'm not going to do it to this SP actually. I'm going to do it to my unhinged door wedge, I mean SP, and if you're wondering what this is, up in the top right will be another iCard on the video of it. So let's get to installing the DHIS kit made by Retro 6. Flipping over the Game Boy Advance unhinged and then removing the two screws on the back holding the battery cover down. Removing this cover is a little bit tricky but it should just fall out into place and then we can remove the replacement battery. 
With that removed, there is four Phillips screws we need to remove from the rear half of the Game Boy. With those removed, we can then just lift this off, and luckily, just like the Game Boy Advance, this is as far as we need to go. As you can see, I actually have the held version still in place, and it looks extremely similar to the Retro 6 version, so I doubt there's any difference, but there's only one way to check, and that's to install this one. So let's desolder the held version. To do that, I'm just going to apply my solder iron onto the joints, and then carefully lift up the flex PCB until it breaks contact. I will also use some solder braid to remove some of the solder. Now we can simply lift up the Helder version and insert the Retro 6 version. I'm going to tack this flex PCB in first. Now that that is tacked in and it's not going to move, I can then go and finish soldering the rest of the joints and then touch up the tacked in joints to actually make a solid connection. And there we have it, this one is all soldered in, but overall I think this is a harder one to install compared to the Game Boy Advance. However, let's put the rear half of the shell back on and insert the four Phillips screws to secure it down. I can now install the battery, put on the battery cover and then secure it down with the two Phillips screws. With that all secured down, we can now get to the testing part. Similar to the Game Boy Advance, I'm actually going to show three different versions. The original sound, the Retro 6 version sound, and the Helder Tech version sound. So starting with before anything was installed, I'm going to play some audio, and then followed up by no audio at all, to see if there's any background noise coming from the Game Boy Advance SP. that's what it's like without anything installed so let's play what it's like after the retro 6 version has been installed so as you can hear some of the background noise is significantly cleaned up but during the actual music i couldn't hear any change now let's go over to the helder version see if there's any difference between the retro 6 and the helder version And as you may have heard, there's very little difference, nothing worth mentioning. To conclude, it seems that without anything installed, yes, there is a bit of background noise, hiss, hum, whatever you want to call it. And after the installation, that is removed. However, during the music playing of the game, I couldn't notice any difference personally. Though, that being said, I have heard and seen that with more modifications done to your Game Boy, such things as like IPS screens, this can dramatically increase the noise that is produced from your Game Boy Advance SP. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section regarding these two mods. I know it can sometimes be quite unpopular, these hiss removal or power cleaner mods, but let me know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on why this is useful or why it's not useful.